If you ever struggle with choosing colors for your drawings, today we are focusing on practicing coloring trees with different color themes. I will introduce a simple and effective formula. We will learn how to choose shades and pair colors. Even if you don't have many markers, I will share tips on achieving nice results with the colors you already own. You will also learn how to draw a tree using just one marker. For additional guidance, I have created a free worksheet that lists all color numbers, breaks down the steps, and summarizes some useful tips. If you would like a more detailed step-by-step -step worksheet that you can print, trace, and practice, those are available on my Patreon. On my Patreon, you will also have the access to part 2 of this tutorial in real time. You can find the link in the description. Color plays an important role in developing your own art style but it can be tricky to grasp where to begin. To improve my coloring skills, I've been taking design and drawing classes on Skillshare, our sponsor for today's video. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives, offering thousands of classes across various fields such as fine art, graphic design, photography, and music. These classes are taught by industry experts, and you can learn by creating projects and getting feedback from the community. Some of my favorite classes include Lindsay Marsh's graphic design series, which has been really helpful. Recently, I've been really enjoying Modern Color Theory, Master Coloring Mixing for Watercolors by Emma Cassie. I have learned more about color theory and practicing mixing colors by taking this class. This summer, I'm excited to keep exploring Skillshare, taking more classes to improve my art skills. I'm happy to share that the first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today! Now let's start our drawings today. We will start by using a pencil to sketch a rough outline. I like to start by drawing the tree trunk. In the Patreon worksheet, you will find some tree trunk drawings you can trace and practice. Imagine the tree trunk as a happy little Y dancing in the breeze. Make each arm have different lengths and angles. Next, let's draw a big circle to represent the tree crown. Then we will add some squiggly lines to make the shape of the tree crown more organic. If you are having trouble seeing the pencil outline, don't worry, I've made a clear outline for you on the free worksheet I provided. Remember, we are not aiming for perfect symmetry here. Nature is full of wonderful imperfections. So let's add some dents around to make our tree crown look more natural. Just have fun with it. To refine the outline, you can use a pen or a color pencil, just like I did here. I've been using pens the most in the past, but wanted to try out color pencils. I recommend choosing a color that's a bit darker than mine. Mine turned out a little too light here, and I didn't notice it until later. Now I'm drawing some happy little marks to mimic the shape of the tree leaves. There are so many styles of marks we can create. If you are interested in more practice, I have made a practice sheet available on my Patreon. In this tutorial, we will focus on shading and how to pick and use colors. Before we start coloring, let's take a moment to learn about shading. It's a simple yet effective formula. To better understand the lighting, when we look at the tree crown, we can think of it as a sphere. If the light is coming from the upper left, we will add dark values on the lower right side of the sphere. When we transform the sphere into an organic shape, the same shading rule still applies. To create volume, we need to use a range of light to dark colors. The simple formula is to create at least three values of colors for your drawing. One for light value, one for middle value, and one for core shadow. The more values you create, the more depths you will achieve. Normally, I use more than three shades, but in this video, we will simplify the process to make it easier for practicing. Keep in mind, one marker can create more than one shade 
depending on how many layers of ink you use. If you often feel lost and don't know where to shade the shi kuang, here is a simple way to do it. Following the shape of the contour, just remember to paint at least three layers of colors from light to dark. I will show you how to use one marker to create three shades later in this video. You can find the timestamp for that in the description box. Now that we have learned how to shade, let's quickly talk about picking colors. It's easier to color if you have at least three shades. They don't have to be the same hue. From light to dark, each color should have enough contrast, meaning the darkness of the color should not be too similar. Let's look at some examples. Follow this value scale and find colors based on their darkness. If you don't have three shades of green, don't worry, there are plenty of options. For instance, you can use a yellow for the lightest shade, then pair it with two shades of green. Or you can combine blue colors with green to draw trees. You might be wondering what if I don't have a light shade of color. In that case, start with a medium shade as your light value, then find two darker colors for mid-tone and the shadows. Just like this example here, the overall color will be darker, but by creating a range of values, you will be able to create a nice drawing. One very important thing is that we can use one marker to create different shades by controlling our speed, pressure, and layers of ink. Here is how it works. Draw fast with very light pressure to create shade number one. Slow down a bit to let more ink be absorbed and create shade two. You can achieve shade three by layering multiple strokes and allowing some drying time between layers. Now I'm going to show you how to color a simple tree using just one marker. I'm using a medium shade of green. If the color is too light or too dark, it might not be able to create multiple shades due to either too few or too many pigment. First, I swiftly brush in some colors as my light value. I leave some white space to keep it lighter compared to a solid fill. Then I'm adding more pressure to create a mid-tone layer. After letting the ink dry a bit, I slow down and layer more ink on the lower right side of the tree crown to create a cool shadow. Let the ink dry a bit more, then add a few more strokes to create a darker value. Using just one medium shade of marker, we create a range of light to dark values. Remember, if your paper is too thin, it won't absorb enough ink to create different shades, so the type of paper is also very important. Now let's apply everything we have learned and the color this tree. You can find the full list of color numbers in the free worksheet. Remember, you don't need to use the same colors as mine. 
The purpose of this exercise is to experiment with all colors you have. It's kind of like making color chart. Just follow the value scale and pick three colors you enjoy working with. I'm using a light yellow along with two shades of green. This combination will give our tree a bright and cheerful feeling. In lots of my drawing, I often use saturated and vibrant colors in the foreground to draw attention and enhance the depth of the drawing. For example, in this forest drawing, the tree with bright colors in the foreground becomes the focal point. In this mountain landscape drawing I did, using bright colors on the grass adds more depth to the drawing. Many times, we may not have colors that perfectly fit the value scale. For example, the third shade is much darker than the second shade, causing the gradation to not be smooth. However, overall, the drawing will still have depth and volume. Later on, I decided to use a darker color pencil to refine the outline one more time and ground the drawing a little bit better.
Now let's use a set of cool green markers to color the tree. Cool tones of colors appear further back, so I often use them in the background. For example, in this forest, I use cool greens for the trees further away. By using the same method and simply changing the colors, we can create a tree with different feeling. The colors I've used so far are all from the Ohuhu 72 color set. You can mix and match a wide variety of colors to create many combinations. It's all about finding a good balance of light and dark colors. Let me show you an example of what happens when there isn't enough contrast between each shade. In this drawing, I picked three pastel colors that have minimum contrast between each other. Following the formula, I still manage to draw a nice tree, but it appears faded and lacks depth compared to other trees. This doesn't mean it's the wrong way to draw. In fact, when drawing trees in the far background, it's good to keep them vague and low contrast. In this video, I've kept it simple by using only three shades for each tree. Sometimes using too many different colors can make a drawing look muddy. This practice has really helped me explore different color combinations for my future drawings. I didn't talk much about color theory in this video, because what's most helpful for me is experimenting with all the colors. Whether the results are good or not, by pairing all the colors you have, you will discover surprising combinations. Now in our final example, I will show you how to color a tree in the fall season. Many of you prefer shorter videos that are easier to finish, so I tried not to make this video too long. But if you want to watch the real-time tutorial for the rest of the 6 drawings, they are available on my Patreon. Remember to take breaks before you continue drawing. If the first two trees didn't turn out as you expected, don't worry. The third practice will be better. In fact, I wasn't quite happy with the second tree because my marker was dry, so the ink didn't blend well. You can see the marker strokes are a bit messy, but I stick with it, took it slow, and in the end, it turned out better than I expected. Remember, our art journey is all about experimenting and learning from each attempt. This time, I'm going to use a brown color pencil.
To color the fall season tree, we can use either three orange and yellowish colors, as you can see in the example I did later. Or we can combine orange with yellow-green colors. Keep in mind, when we put this orange color underneath the green color, it will make the green color look more yellowish and warm. Sometimes we don't want to apply the first color all over the place if we want to avoid changing the tone of the colors you use later on. Following the contour of the tree crown, make sure the edge of each color layer are random and organic. Avoid making them too straight or perfectly round. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't downloaded the free worksheet yet, you can find the link in the description. If you'd like to share your drawing on Instagram, feel free to tag me and use hashtag artwithimian. I'm always happy to see your art. Looking forward to see you in the next video.